We're going to take a look at this question one from the exam, school exam, and basically this um, can be entirely done with the calculator. And we'll have to do a little bit by hand, but we have to sketch the graph and so on, but almost all of it can be done with the graph and calculator. Now the only catch to this one is, is that when you enter it into your graph and calculator, you have to be a little bit careful because you've got a numerator all over two. And so if you, you, you have to use a technique of using either double brackets or you could put a uh, half out in front. So you could go one, A, B, C, two, and then you could go um, X minus four, and then 10 minus X. That's one way of doing it, um, and draw it out. What you should be able to know that this is an upside down graph. The other way of doing it is to use double brackets. And if you want me to show you that way, I can, but uh, we'll do that on a separate video. So here's the graph. And the, and the question becomes, what kind of graph is A versus X, which means what's the relationship between the area and X and the area. And basically, the graph is a parabola or a quadratic. Either one of those would be fine. What's the area of the triangle when X is five? So again, we go to the graphing calculator when X is five. So if I was to exit out of that and go to the table menu, then I could get X to be five and I could figure out what A or Y is going to be. And select that on the calculator table. So just go down to where X is five, the area is 2.5, easy. And then we go down to the next part. Now we're actually going to have to sketch the graph. So we need to get points. We need to accurately sketch the graph. I would probably use my table. And since this graph is going from 0 to 12, I'm going to make um, my table go from 0 to 12. and get the table up so I can get some points. Now, 0 is negative 20, so that's not particularly useful. 1 is not particularly useful. What 2 is negative 8. Um, I can't really get that on there either. So 3, OK, 4 is 0. There's an x-intercept. So we can mark that on the graph. x-intercept is at 4. Uh, 5 is 2.5. I could probably mark that on here because that's 2. Five, so 5 is halfway between, and 2.5 is about there, so get it there, and we get 6 is 4, and those, and we get 7 is 4.5, 8 is 4, And I also get another x-intercept at 10. Now, that's not a really good graph yet because I don't have the vertex. So I could go, again, go to my menu, go to my graph because I need features and I need to name those features. So when I draw the graph, I can go to Shift, G, Solve. I can get the maximum point, which is at 7 and 4.5. So 7 and 4.5 is right here. 7 and 4.5 is the vertex. And now I've pretty much got my graph drawn. Great, but it's there. And that's my vertex. And my x-intercepts are 10, 0, 4, 0. Um, I've got a line of symmetry down through here. I could talk about that as a feature. I could find my y-intercept if I wanted to, even though it's a big negative number, but I have to make sure that my graph, uh, exit, draw. Uh, I'm not going to get the y-intercept unless I actually show it on my window. So I've got to actually go all the way down here until I get to the y-intercept. Now I could go g solve and I go y-intercept, which is 20. So the y-intercept set. 0 and negative 20. So I've got some features. So I've covered that. I've done a sketch of the graph. I've named my features. The x, these are x-intercepts, and I probably should say what they are, x-intercepts. Oop. Oop. Vertex, line of symmetry, so on. Now the next part 
Using the graph sketch part, find the x value for which the area of the triangle is 4. So area of the triangle is 4. Well, that's my line. That's my area, which is at 4. So I already know that. I did that. I plotted those points. So that's 6 and 8. Uh, the x value for which the area of the triangle is 6. Well, the area of the triangle, if you understand, the maximum point is at 7 and 4.5. I can't get an area of 6. There cannot be an area of 6. Max area is at 4.5. That's just understanding what the problem, the context of the problem is telling you and showing you that you have an understanding around that. Now, when X is 9.6, the area of the triangle is 1.2. So basically they're saying, well, that's 10. So 9.6 is sort of somewhere. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, somewhere. I mean, 9 there, 9.6, somewhere in here, right? And it's 1.2, That's so it's somewhere there. So basically, that's just an estimate. But So find the x values for which the area of the triangle is at least 1.2. So it's going to be at least 1.2. So all of this, right, is basically when it's when the area is bigger than 1.2 or 1.12 or whatever it is. So all of that area. So you've got to name that. So basically, you could, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can go to your graphing calculator and we go to the table if you want. Uh, now, there is a way of doing this, and I've not shown you this, so maybe we'll go back to the graph. You can do it here, draw it. So I can see the graph. Okay, so if I go to Shift G cell, there's this thing that I can go over here, and I can go X calculate, which means that when, or Y calculate basically. So when X, we don't want that one. We want this one. We want problem G solve. Oops. G solve, and we want this one X calc. So when y is 1 point, what was it, 1.12? 4.4. Uh, and also 9.6. So this is 4.4, and this is 9.6. You could have done this as an algebra question and you could have solved it. So you could have made the expression equal to 1.12 and solved for x by using the equation here and making it equal to 1.12. That takes a lot longer to do. Um, so I would be probably more inclined to use my graphing calculator to use that function of it. And so it's between 4.4 and 9.6. And if you said that between, the other way of writing it is x has got to be greater than or equal to 4.4, but less than or equal to 9.6. Um, suppose the graph, now we've got a whole brand new graph. So let's just take a look at that. So let's just get rid of that. And let's go x squared plus x plus 1. Draw it. All right, so there it is. And if we want to know what the, uh, it's talking about shifting it. So if we want to know what the minimum point is, is that so the vertex of this particular graph. When you're shifting and doing translations or transformations, you need to know what the vertex is. So it's 0.5 and 0.75. Now we want to move, find the values of the constant P and R if uh, 2 to 1 are the coordinates of the new vertex. So the new vertex is going to be 2 and 1. So we want to move the graph 
basically from a vertex of 0.5 and 0.75. We want to move it so that it's now going to be over 2 and up 1. We need to know what that slide is basically going to be, right? So you could use the numbers, figure out how far you're moving from 0.5 to 2. So it's a shift 0.5 to 2. Well, how do you figure out what the difference is? 0.5 minus 2 plus 2? What is it? That's a move of 2.5? No, that's not right. So 2 minus 0.5 is a move of 1.5. Yep, that makes sense. So that's a move from 0.5 to 2 is a move of 1.5. So I subtract them. So I want to figure out I'm going to go up to 1. So 1 minus 0.75 is 0.25. So that's the move. It's moved. So if find the values, so you're going to use it, move it P units and then upwards by R. So P is going to be your move right and left, which is 1.5, and R is going to be your move up and down, which is 0.25. That's the easiest way to do that. There's other ways, but that's the easiest way. And that's question one.